Hi, dear friends. It's my great pleasure to tell you why semiconductor and chip design offers such great opportunity for your career and enjoyment. It is a professional field for us to innovate, create wealth, and shape modern civilization. My talk is entitled Innovation Trend of Semiconductor Memories, as memory products are crucial to all electronic applications, deeply affected our life directly, and contain many challenges for future technical breakthroughs. My story begins with the evolution of record keeping over the millennium. In around 3100 BC, humans learned to use lives to carve words on stones. Then in around 105 AD, Mr. Tsai in China invented paper and calligraphy. After another 700 years, humans invented printing technology and had books. This allowed vast and fast distribution of knowledge to all sorts of people, improving life considerably. But now in modern civilization, you have smartphones, and you can just use one finger to reach the world. Why? Primarily, it's attribute to us, semiconductor engineers and IC designers who invented modern papers and pens. When you touch your panels, words can be generated, enter through semiconductor memory called DRAM, which is like a modern pen. The content generated gets stored in another semiconductor memory called flash, which is like modern paper. And more data or images are compiled on solid state, which is like modern book. Finally, all these books can be stored among the social community through a cloud data center, just like a modern library. Unbelievable how much pay power we can have today. It's all achieved through semiconductor memory inventions. And now I'm going to tell you what happened. What allowed us to have such abundant semiconductor story? Dr. Simon Z in 1967 realized this floating gate semiconductor devices. He used a transistor just like a water faucet. You can turn on and off to allow the water flowing through. And most important, Simon's invention was to insert a floating gate, M2, like inserting a storage plug. He used the physics principles to put electrons into the plug, which works to some data there. Amazingly, this stored dead electron can be kept there for many years, unless we program it. We can program it. The second super invention in non-volatile memories happened 18 years after Simon's invention. Dr. Fukuoka invented and demonstrated a flash memory land. He made a serial connection of floating gate non-volatile devices. Data can be serially programmed into all these cells and are stored for many years under our circuit instruction. These data can be read out in a serial mode and provide the lowest cost per bit in comparison to all the other memories and can keep the data even without electrical power. Now, NAND is used to build solid state storage, which can have much lower energy consumption than hard disk drives, and NAND is now the major storage device for data centers. What is the most advanced flash technology today? This slide shows you a 3D NAND cell array. Wow! People can now stack a series of long volatile devices above the silicon surface, similar to building a skyscraper. The latest technical publication has shown that a total of 32 layers of NAND cells has been realized for a 128 gigabit memory product per chip. Look at the other super invention in the 21st century. Dr. Denard invented a one transistor, one capacitor DRAM cell, also in 1967. He simply used a transistor like a switch, as I said, but this time he put charge into a storage capacitor, like you put water into a glass. But the charge in the capacitor may leak away in the silicon wafer substrate, so the charge has to be refreshed. In 1972, Mr. Stein designed a very smart, sensitive cross-coupled sense amplifier to read the signal out from the cell 
and can restore the original information back to the cell simultaneously. So today, the DRAM become most important memories to streamline data in almost every electronic application. But it cannot hold the data. However, it has faster speed and land flash memories. So today, DRAM is still the largest utilized memory of them all with over $40 billion. So far, the most advanced DRAM chip is a 25 nanometer, 8 gigabit, 1 volt, most power efficient LPDDR4. It can achieve the total bandwidth of 25.6 gigabyte per second. This very high speed supports the performance needs of many electronics, such as 4G LTE smartphones, 4K TVs, large data center, and so on. Now, the Moore's law is still progressing to 10 nanometer, but another innovative technical trend is happening. I named this trend heterogeneous integration of multiple die, particularly enabled by advanced memory technologies. In early 2000s, we created DRAMs to succeed volume production of non-good die, KGD memory form. Effectively, the raw DRAM data can be integrated with processor within a package and be guaranteed to have good reliability like package DRAMs. Today, this heterogeneous integration has progressed to not only integrate DRAM, but also logic, DRAM, and flash, or even analog power devices within a package. And I believe in the future we'll integrate sensors, MEMS, or other non-silicon materials inside the module. So that will create many more advanced system chips I call Giga Super Chips. So the upper SEM picture here shows an approach to stack four dies by using wire bonding technologies. But now we have more advanced technology, which is TSD through silicon via. So wire bonding is look like an escalator, and TSD like building elevator in the heterogeneous integration area. So more innovation are emerging in semiconductor memory industry, but the current memory hierarchy cannot satisfy the system demands for low power, higher speed. For example, the world needs to build more and more data center, but you know, each data center can easily burn out the power about one fifth of nuclear power plant. So how do we make a super low power but maintain the high speed memories is absolutely critical, crucial, I mean crucial for the immediate needs of future modern society. Here I plotted memory hierarchy based on capacity and cost versus speed. Although the faster speed uh, memory is SRAM integrated with CPU, but it's too expensive, so we must use DRAM, which is not perfect to support the data stream. But DRAM is volatile, so we also have to use NAND flash memories. But flash memory, it is faster than magnetic storage. However, it does have very slow write data speed. So there is a gap between DRAM and NSD. So I'll give you an example. According to a presentation by a leader of the Facebook data center, most of the pictures, videos you are using are huge in size, but they are rarely used once a year, once upon a time. And so in his view, Today's flash technology is too expensive. So what he wants is not today's flash, but he wants lower reliability for rewrite cycle, but cheaper. So he can build huge data center and provide the cost advantage to customers. So here, not only do we need to push the evolutionary evolution, uh, innovations, but we also need to encourage smart inventors to make revolutionary technology and super invention in 21st century. Tremendous opportunity are waiting there. 
So as a conclusion, our semiconductor industry will have a few more decades of prosperity due to a rapid growing number of diversified applications. Our semiconductor memory help to modernize human life and are still the core technology to enable improvements in our civilization. The huge size of the memory industry, over $80 billion, supports more research and innovation. So innovation that start like a dream can quickly become reality on this well-established industry platforms. But there is a lot of work to do. On one hand, current memory technology will need a continuous enhancement through evolutionary innovations, which you have opportunity, but they are insufficient to meet the future system requirement. So, my friends, be bold and join our semiconductor design technology and the system engineering society. You will enjoy leading the chart to advance the civilization and made hit upon the most important super invention in the 21st century. Be a hero, both for yourself and for our world. Thank you very much for your attention.